In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our gospel passage this morning, we encounter the Beatitudes as listed in Luke's gospel. There are some who assert that the Beatitudes of Jesus might be a way of kind of updating the Ten Commandments, and I don't know if that's true or not. There are some who admonish that these Beatitudes are meant for us to strive for, to achieve in our lives, and, and I'm confused by that, because to tell you the truth, these are tough sayings. They're challenging. I mean, at first reading, when you try to, try to comprehend what they're saying, they can be just a bit confusing. Think about it. From the time we leave high school, we work an entire life striving for the very things that the Beatitudes today label as a woe. As individuals, we invest our time and our talent over the course of our lives to become able to pay our own bills, to save for retirement, and to provide for loved ones. But Jesus says, woe to you who are rich. And we strive throughout our life to ensure that our family is not in want, that needs are satisfied. But Jesus says, woe to you who are full. And we do everything impossible to enjoy our lives, to experience joy and gladness and contentment. Jesus says, woe to you who are laughing. And we conduct ourselves in a manner that brings honor and respect and dignity. Yet Jesus says, woe to you when all speak well of you. So what are we supposed to do? How do we live into these Beatitudes? Is Jesus telling us to do the very opposite of what most, if not all of us, have been trying to do since high school? Not provide for our loved ones? Don't provide a life of peace for our families? Don't plan or prepare for retirement? And while we're at it, should we just go ahead and treat others so despicably that no one will speak well of us? Of course not. You see, I'm not sure that the Beatitudes are really about us. I think maybe the Beatitudes are a revelation about reality as well as a statement about God. We are Christians gathered here this morning, specifically Episcopalians, and as such we understand God as Trinity. We have our Apostles' Creed that we use during baptisms and confirmations. We declare, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And then we have our Nicene Creed, our Eucharistic Creed, one we will recite in just a few moments, where we declare that God is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, the three persons of the Godhead. And because God is Trinity, God is also community. And this truth is core to our faith. God is Trinity and God is community. So, just how do the Beatitudes reveal something to us about God? I would suggest in two ways. First, the reality that there are those among us who are poor, who are hungry, who are weeping who are excluded and hated and reviled, just like the Beatitudes say. And that's reality. But because of God, because of community, because of Jesus, we cannot turn a blind eye to those in our community in such straits. Because they are, as the Beatitudes tell us, they are blessed by God. And they're part of God's family too. And so we are compelled through the new commandment to love others, specifically those listed in this, in this passage, as Jesus loves us. And the second way this reveals something to us about God is this. Simply put, God is God. God is in control. At the end of the day, we are, each of us, responsible to use the gifts and the talents given to us, to provide, to plan, to prepare. 
But control, control is an illusion. Our faith cannot rest in our planning, or in our preparation, or in our sense of self-satisfaction. Our faith must remain in God. Our trust must be rooted in God as our provider and sustainer and redeemer. This is what our Old Testament passage is saying when we read in our opening words this morning, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength. When we do this, when we put our trust and faith in our own achievements and plans, then, then we risk hearing the words of today's gospel, Woe to you! The call of the words of Jesus are these, Put your trust in the Lord your God. Don't trust in riches, don't trust in satisfaction, don't trust in things that make you happy. Trust in God. It's all about trust. <clears throat> Who do you put your trust in? What do you put your trust in? It is the poor and the hungry and the grieving, those who are blessed by God, who have come to understand and come to acknowledge that trusting in stuff just doesn't solve things. Trusting in self just doesn't solve things. They've reached a point in their life, in their experience, where they know and they understand that their trust is and can only be in Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. Today's psalm said it this way. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. In other words, happy are they who have trust in nothing else but the Lord. The Beatitudes are a reminder that we are called to community. We live with those who are blessed. The call to minister to those who are blessed by our Lord. And the Beatitudes also remind us that we are to put to our put to our trust only in the Lord. Let us pray. God, the strength of all who put their trust in you mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, give us the help of your grace.